Good morning. It's good to be with you today and glad that you're all here as we gather this morning on this All Saints Sunday to, uh, to celebrate All Saints and also mourn the death of, of our loved ones who have died at, uh, you know, this past year. And so we'll be doing the, uh, the litany for that here in a, little mo- in a few moments for the service. Just a couple of announcements for the mission and ministry of our congregation. A reminder that tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Martha Circle meets, and uh, Andrew Tucker will be here for, for, um, for that presentation, and he'll be discussing the, the uh, work that, uh, that's going on in our church camp, so I invite you to be a part of that at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Also, a reminder, and you noticed, I'm sure, when you came in, and you know, this is the season where, where uh, we once again ask, I think, much of you. Um, but, but you always respond. So we are collecting noodles. We need 250 bags of noodles for the uh, Lake Township Fish Thanksgiving dinner. You can start bringing those noodles in and we'll put them in the Welcome Center counter and then get those delivered, you know, as we get closer to Thanksgiving. Also, you notice out on the Welcome Center counter, there's a string of stockings uh, right underneath the, uh, the counter. Those gifts that we're providing are for Luther Home of Mercy as Christmas gifts. It's hard to believe we're getting ready for Christmas all, you know, at this point. Um, And also, the tree out on the Welcome Center counter, the Christmas tree with the tags on it, those gifts will be for the Christmas, um, for the folks that are um, leading the Love Our Community and and Lake Schools uh, project. So, invite you to take a look at those things, bring those gifts in. And then we will certainly get those distributed to, um, to the agency. One more thing. Coat drive. Coat, coat drive. We're going to be... Okay. Kids coats, uh, you know, up to adults coats, but mostly uh, school age kids. Okay. Right. So we're going to be doing a coat drive as well. And so I invite you to watch for announcements about that. Coats for our... Uh, for the children at Lake Local Schools. I would invite you now to please stand as you are able and we will continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning and our end. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal one, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit, and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of your neighbors. Following in the servants of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once and for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again, and rejoice in your salvation. Amen.
risen Christ. We remember with fondness our friends, relatives, and members of Advent who were called to your eternal home this year. Bill Bordenero. A reading from the Gospel of John, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Karen Brooks. A reading from Psalm 100. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Millie Cerrone, a reading from Matthew, the 11th chapter. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Sharon Huckaba. A reading from the 121st Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Thomas McKnight, a reading from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never die. No one shall steal them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. No one can steal them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Michael Moore. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Lena Varga, a reading from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will fully know, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. The greatest of these is love.
we can see how you worked in their lives, O oh God. They truly were imitators of your Son, and their faith in you was evident in their actions. Congregation, memories of their faces and their love are etched in our minds forever. You blessed them with fruitful lives, and our lives were blessed through them. They now live with you surrounded by your presence and caressed by your care. Though we can't see them now, we know our loved ones will greet us in heaven. Assure us again of your promise that we will be with you and all your saints in heaven. For nothing in all of creation will be able to keep us away from your love. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Revelations chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how much he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. You who are our strength and our Redeemer, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. We celebrate, cel- we celebrate and are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And in this cloud are all the people who have gone before us. People recognized officially as saints as well as people important to all of us. And many of you have come here today with a heavy heart. Each of us has some specific person in mind when thinking about death. And for many of you, it's one of the people that we just lit a candle for just a couple of minutes ago. For others... It's someone whose death is still so fresh that our eyes sting with grief. I, like you today, stand here and grieve because I still remember vividly almost four years to the day when I lit one of those candles for my father. We call these people the communion of saints. Not only because, holy, uh, because we today celebrate Holy Communion, because that's what we're doing when we remember them, but because we believe that's what they're doing today with God and with one another. We trust that they're communing in gratitude with each other's company, and they're at that great, great banquet celebration where there's no more tears, no crying, no weeping, No more pain and only rejoicing because God is no longer hard to find but right there right there dwelling with them and among them from this time forth and forevermore In the Lutheran tradition, saints aren't really a special category of people who happen to be just the opposite of sinners. In the Lutheran traditions, saints are just people who have been forgiven. The reality of it all is anybody who is already baptized is a saint. And as far as Luther, from his theology, understood this is that because we have been baptized we are all then little Christs little Christs we're many Christs in communion all saints is the day we remember those that have preceded us this year in death even as we add to their numbers hundred years from now God willing 
Someone will remember each of us for handing down the faith to people that we know and love. If you can name the person or people that have drawn you into a fellowship of faith, maybe the persons who have invited you to celebrate this Holy Communion, if by embodying faith so clearly that you wanted for yourself, then Barbara Brown Taylor, and and I thank her for a, a part of this message, Barbara Brown Taylor says, then you have your own job description. It's your own job description for those people who come after you. Gandhi had mentioned, or he thought that as little Christs, a rose does not need to preach, it simply spreads its fragrance, the fragrance of its own sermon. Gandhi had an evangelism of the rose. He thought that whenever we came into contact with anybody, the fragrance that we would have left behind would be as sweet smelling or as good a smelling as a rose. Now, one of the other saints, and I con- contrast this with um, what um, Teresa of Avila says, she says that I have no defense against affection, she said. I could be bribed with a sardine. Now, I don't know that I'd, I think I'd still go for the rose, okay? (laughs) Faith in our lives, faith is one of those abstract concepts. It's a code word that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Faith most often means what people believe. Think about Jesus. That he was born of a virgin. That he died for their sins. That he rose from the dead. And when we get these beliefs right, then we're doing the right thing, you know? And in a couple of minutes, we're going to all recite together the Apostles' Creed. We have that belief. And it's in that context that our beliefs form the content of our faith. In that way, it's used as a noun. But you know, I know of people who use the word faith in a totally opposite way. They're really not sure what they believe. And even the things they do believe have a way of shifting under their feet. So that when they speak, they have to decide, or they have decided to trust what they can, what they can never know for certain. Namely, that God is, and that God can be trusted. Even if they can't get more specific than that. And it's in that usage that faith is a verb. Faith is a verb. Based on what we've already read in the revelations today that Alex read just a couple of minutes ago, doesn't it seem like faith in either case is just utter foolishness? At least in the eyes of the media, historians, Futurists and realists. Then I saw the new heaven and the new earth. For the first heaven and the first first earth have passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I think faith is continuing continuing to read an ancient text like that for 2,000 years, though it has never come true. Faith has continued to look for the new Jerusalem, though the one we say today in the news, doesn't it just hurt you all over when you see what's going on over in the Middle East today? Faith is continuing to trust that God has a wedding in mind and not a wake. 
in spite of all the evidence to the contrary. I don't want to make faith sound like denial. It's not that. If you follow the story of the Amish school shootings from 2006, you know that people who face tragedy can share their faith even in spite of what had happened. People like that, they look at sin and death right in the face and forgive them. Taylor goes on to say, once they lowered the coffins of all those young girls into the ground, right in the face of all that, the Amish, they set up a trust fund. They set up a trust fund for the children of their killer's children. They visit the killer's parents and they bake pies and take them to them because they hold a vision of a new heaven and a new earth that is so much more real than sin and death. Even though they can't see that vision through their tears, They don't abandon their faith in reality. They exercise a stubborn refusal to accept any version of a deep reality but God's own. Their faith doesn't rest on the reality that is presented to them by Fox News, The Daily Show, Walmart, or even the White House. You see, their faith rested in God alone. And even when it made them terribly, terribly vulnerable to the world in which they live. Do you know that when the Amish tore down that schoolhouse and they were getting ready to build a new one, they were given a lot of instruction by a lot of people all throughout the country to build into this new building safety measures. Better measures of security. But they said, no, that's not our way. Their children are little Christs, just like they are. Well, you know how pitiful his security measures actually were? What they were like for Jesus? On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, but the sheet that covers all nations... He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from their faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. Check this out. This was written by the prophet Isaiah some 800 years earlier. He wrote about a similar vision of God's working the story out. And he even included the menu. Isn't that just beautiful? Friends, if, if as a prophet Isaiah has said, God has swallowed up death, I just can't imagine God spitting anybody out in the process. See, I am making all things new. If you believe that, if you trust that, then in the words of Flannery O'Connor, you will know the truth and the truth will make you strange. 
See, I am making all things new. I make the world new. I'm making the church new. You can't see it, but don't worry about it. That's somebody else's job to make the vision come true. Our job is to hold on to that vision. We are God's saints. God's saints wear weddings are chosen instead of wakes. We are the ones that believe what we believe we cannot know, who trust what we can't see as we act on the baptismal promise that turns us into little Christs through whom God's vision breaks into the world. See, I am making all things new. And also he said, write this. Write this because for these words are trustworthy and true. May God bless us with faith to live these words well. Amen.
we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O oh God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to life. Rouse your church from slumber, where we have held back in fear or shame, unbind us. Embolden us in our proclamation of your good news that all may know abundant life. Merciful God, O oh God of creation, you have founded your world on rivers and seas, preserve fresh water sources and the creatures who call them home, heal places of pollution and nourish places of drought. Merciful God. O oh God of the earth, you reign over all the nations and peoples. Inspire us with wisdom and discernment as we elect legislators and leaders this week. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. Merciful God. O oh God of heaven, you make your home among mortals. Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely. Encourage those in despair and heal any who are suffering. Today we pray especially for Billy Llewellyn, the family of Charlotte Richards, Phyllis Novi, Kay, Don, Kevin, Joyce and Pete, and all those whose needs are known to us and for those whom we name before you in our hearts. Abide with your faithful ones in love. Merciful God. O oh God, grant that your Holy Spirit may rest upon our call committee as they listen for your will. Grant us the patience and hope that comes by faith in you. Merciful God. O oh God, who serves you set before us a feast of rich food. Sustain our ministries of fellowship and hospitality. Strengthen the hands and hearts of all who prepare and serve food for our nourishment. Merciful God. O oh God, Alpha and Omega, we give you thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you. With all your saints, we praise you, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God, we offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen please be seated <clears throat> <clears throat> 